Recording is starting now. So welcome everyone. This is a developer meetup for the Jenkins project specifically focused on documentation. And we're going to start off with uh, Oleg's going to begin the presentation, give us an overview, introduction, etc. Gavin and I will be involved. We'll show and tell some various things. Demos, this is intentionally interactive. If you have a question, you're welcome to use the raise your hand um, icon. You're also welcome to just unmute yourself and ask the question. We don't mind. This really should be intentionally in interactive where we talk to each other. Now, in yep. order to verbally ask a question, you will have to unmute yourself. And we don't have so many people on the call, so yeah, let's just keep it relaxed. Uh, do you see my screen? We do, thanks. Okay, so I'll start the presentation. So, by the way, I shared this presentation in uh, the six GitHub chat, and somebody could also repost it in the Zoom chat if needed. Okay. I guess it should be fine now, right? Looks, looks great, absolutely. Okay, yeah, so thanks uh, to everyone for joining our meetup. So yeah, again, we talk about uh, documentation for Jenkins plugins, uh, specifically about uh, just documentation like user docs, landing pages, and also about change logs. Uh, so yeah, that's the agenda for our meetup. If you visit uh, Jenkins Online Meetup first time, we have um, a page on uh, Jenkins Online Meetup where you, which you can join and follow our events. Uh, we try to organize events more or less regularly, and hopefully we will have more events soon. We have uh, one event tentatively planned for December about Jenkins configuration as code. We will likely do uh, other presentations about pipeline. So just please follow and uh, join. And uh, we start a series of developer-focused meetups. So historically, our meetups were rather for Jenkins users, but we also uh, want to have meetups for developers. So the idea is uh, basically everything about plugin maintenance, some code dives, development tools, testing, shared ecosystem, whatever. So what we usually do at special group, group meetings. So if somebody wants to present, please do so. We are looking for speakers. And yeah, the idea of these meetups is to have just more relaxed discussions between developers, which I still uh, uh, recorded. And yeah, hopefully there is more discussions, show and tell sessions than slides. Obviously, if you invite me, you will still get slides, but uh, yeah, uh, the main idea is to have discussions. Yeah, as Mark said today, we have uh, three speakers, but uh, yeah, if you want to present something about your experience, please uh, don't hesitate. Uh, to do so, so we can adjust our uh, discussion um, as we go, so like at SIG meetings. Yeah. I will start from a quick introduction, then Mark and Gavin will do demos, and then we will also talk about change logs. Okay, that's it. So questions we already discussed, uh, so just move on. Uh, either Zoom chat or guitar or raise hand. Uh, who has ever seen uh, this page? Yeah, Mark Waite is uh, a maintainer of Git plugin, and it's much appreciated. Uh, and if you use Jenkins, you may have seen this page, and basically this is how Jenkins plugin uh, pages uh, used to look, more or less. So we have more than uh, 1,500 plugins. Uh, uh, the most of them used to have documentation on Wiki. Uh, there were some uh, uh, additional uh, markers, etc. attached, but uh, yeah, if you go to this page, you see something like that. Uh, so, um, obviously, uh, there are some uh, things to be improved, but yeah, for a long time, my uh, wiki used to be as a main source of uh, plugin documentation. Um, now, we also have uh, plugins to Jenkins IO, which was introduced uh, um, as a part of Jenkins 2.0 effort. So, now you can find uh, uh, plugins here. Just for example, you can get listing, you can go to whatever random plugin. And if everything goes fine, you get uh, uh, the page with documentation here. But again, all this documentation is sourced from uh, Wiki. So basically nothing uh, changes specifically for this plugin. So yeah, this is how um, uh, Jenkins plugin documentation used to work. Um, we had uh, a lot of historical issues with it. For example, uh, Wiki is just hard to edit. Uh, it's hard uh, to add something. Um, uh, yeah, before 2018, we also had capture, and uh, I would say this capture was just terrible because I was able to pass it maybe uh, in 20% time or something like that. 
uh, now it's gone, but yeah, still uh, there is a lot of uh, things going on uh, this, uh, this weekend. So Oleg, I am pleased to note that I finally submitted the request to delete the squatted Git client plugin page that I had repeatedly tried to delete and that spammers had repeatedly brought back from the dead. So okay. I, I yeah, was so living, living the it. dream on that experience. Okay. So yeah, uh, Jenkins Wiki. Uh, Jenkins Wiki is basically based on Confluence, as you may have seen. This Confluence uh, uh, is self-hosted by Jenkins, uh, so we run it as a service. We maintain it in the Jenkins infrastructure team. Thanks a lot for Olivia Vernin and other contributors who help to maintain that. So yeah, you can see this unstable ball on the hill, but basically it stands not just on its own, uh, but thanks to the Jenkins infrastructure team, which holds us from all sides, preventing it from falling. But uh, yes, historically we had a lot of issues uh, with Jenkins Wiki. Uh, one of the issues is just lack of intra-admin capacity, uh, so yeah, we don't have so many contributors in infrastructure team. This is something we are working on in the documentation special interest group as well by improving contributing guidelines, by improving documentation so that eventually we can have uh, more contributors. Uh, we also work on um, user experience. Um, uh, sorry. Um, Okay, let's go back to Wiki. Actually, uh, I was supposed to grumble about it. So yeah, Jenkins Wiki user experience. It's capture about all other things. So yeah, it's hard uh, uh, to really operate it. Um, it also causes uh, um, a split brain between information because you can have Wiki, you can have GitHub or readme. For users, it's hard to find where to find actual documentation. Sometimes actual documentation is just missing. Um, and of course, we have uh, had uh, some outages and some performance issues. There are some uh, implementation details, but yeah, our wiki is really self-hosted, so it's not uh, in the Confluence cloud, uh, our classroom cloud. Uh, and yeah, sometimes it's just slow. And what it means if you're a plugin maintainer, you uh, release a plugin, you go and want to update change log, and the wiki is down. So you uh, send a message to infrastructure team chat, hey, I have a problem. Uh, then you wait and probably you forget to put a change log until somebody reminds you maybe a couple of months later. So obviously it doesn't help. Um, then uh, there are issues with security upgrades because Confluence as any other service also has uh, some release cycles. And it means that if you want to protect the Jenkins users, for example, from uh, the personal data being exposed or uh, from just uh, people uh, going and hacking the stuff, then uh, we need to regularly update. And again, uh, it uh, puts additional pressure on the Jenkins infrastructure team. And last but not least is spam attacks. So the thing is, uh, uh, Mark mentioned. So historically, Jenkins Wiki was a destination for attackers because yeah, if you have an account in Jenkins Lab, you can go and uh, edit any page without uh, additional permissions, without additional reviews. There are some protected pages, but uh, yeah, the most of pages are definitely not protected. And yeah, if you like buying water heaters in uh, Jakarta or something like that, probably you would be interested in these spam attacks. But for the most of users, it's a major disruption. And again, uh, people spend a lot of time just uh, for cleaning up a wiki, reverting uh, changes, uh, banning users. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's why we had capture. Apparently, it didn't help. So yeah, um, it's quite complicated. Um, in October, we actually had just another outage and just another spam attack. So maybe Mark has uh, more content of what exactly was uh, impacted, but yeah, we had a lot of pages. I just missed uh, the party. But what you may have seen, there was a tweet from Tyler about uh, Jenkins Wiki going to the read-only state. There is also a developer mailing list announcement. So if you follow the Jenkins developer mailing list, and we definitely recommend you to do so, uh, you can see that uh, there is some uh, comments, so there is a lot of discussions. Uh, so basically, this was a trigger for the today's meeting and for all the work we present. So stay tuned for that. And here, if you go to Jenkins Wiki, so I have a page open, uh, and you can see that uh, there is a header there that uh, Wiki is still in the maintenance mode. So basically, the most of Jenkins contributors cannot uh, edit Wiki pages now. Uh, we've got permissions uh, for a number of users so that we can uh, help with migration, but that's it. For the rest, you should, uh, Wiki directs you to the blog post. So this is a blog post we uh, sent out uh, on October 21. So it's just uh, 
uh, four days since uh, this announcement. So in four days, uh, we basically updated all our guidelines. Uh, thanks to Gavin, we also created the first version of the exporter tool, and we were able to offer a first version of this uh, plugin migration flow, uh, which uh, we are presented today. So yeah, thanks a lot uh, uh, for everyone uh, to everyone. And yeah, I think that's it for that. Any questions so far? So, so I guess one question, I'm assuming that, that the wiki is likely to remain read-only indefinitely. Is that also your assumption, Oleg? Or will there be some day in the future when it comes back? Mm, so originally when I've seen this announcement, my understanding was that we are going to revert it back to the editable state. But taking the success with migration tools, with migration guidelines, uh, uh, now I made my peace with the current situation, so I am happy to accept the state that uh, Wiki stays read only. But yeah, if somebody has concerns uh, about that, uh, there is a developer mailing list. Uh, so just comment uh, there, and uh, yeah, we can start from it. So Thank personally, uh, I don't think that it will be reverted unless there is a strong need to do so. Great. Uh, okay, any other questions? Okay, then let's continue. So yeah, it's uh, in read-only state. So what it means for users and for maintainers. So first, the all user developer of the documentation, which is still on Wiki, is not editable. Uh, for plugin maintainers, you can all, also cannot uh, edit uh, your documentation unless you migrate somewhere. You cannot edit change logs because in most of plugins, change logs are still posted on Wiki. Um, and also you cannot update uh, labels uh, and uh, labels uh, were used historically for marking the plugins for adoption, for putting plugin categories. Right now there are alternatives for that, but yeah, you cannot longer use Wiki as is. Uh, so, yeah, our default suggestion is migration, and you have uh, basically two destinations. One destination is about uh, plugin repositories on GitHub. So, if you maintain a plugin, you can just move uh, the documentation uh, to your repository. Um, and if you just speak about gen generic docs, you can move to Jenkins.io. Um, so, these are two main ways, and uh, both ways. I'm not sure going. Yeah, both ways basically allow you to achieve documentation as code. Uh, so documentation as code is just a concept which says that, okay, let's store our documentation along with all other product, including uh, code, including uh, build flows. So now yeah, we are used to store uh, Jenkins files in uh, SCM. We also store uh, Maven definitions in SCM. And the question is, why don't we put uh, our documentation there? So I'll just show you an example. Uh, okay. A bit, uh, why don't? Okay, now it exists. I'm not sure. Uh, probably I have some performance issues on my laptop. Surprisingly. Okay. So yeah, this is our uh, Jenkins core repository. So I just take it for example. Here you go to README, and here you can uh, get uh, README in B. Uh, so basically, this is a file which is stored uh, right inside ACM and which is displayed in GitHub. Um, and it was one of the reasons of split brains uh, because uh, many plugins already had read names to appear better on GitHub and wikis to appear better on Jenkins plugin website. Uh, so yeah, it was uh, quite uh, difficult to find actual versions. So what are good things about it? Uh, you could put everything there. You can also uh, you can have uh, additional pages with documentation. I don't have them in this repository, but you can just go to uh, configuration as code, for example, plugin. Yeah, configuration as code plugin. So here you can see that in addition to the main landing page, you can also uh, have docs stored right inside. So here, for example, uh, there is documentation, developer documentation, contributing guidelines, which are a part of uh, GitHub metadata. Some uh, historic documentation about plugins, etc., and there are also there is also feature documentation. And you can see that this documentation is in both Markdown and ASCII docs. So depending on uh, what's your preference, you can use different format, and uh, hence you can put the entire documentation uh, to GitHub. Uh, what it gives you? Uh, so firstly, 
um, GitHub can become a kind of front page for you because GitHub involves its own ecosystem and it means that if you're um, Jenkins developer, then you will likely start from GitHub repository, Snowchrome, or whatever plugin site. Uh, so by putting documentation there, you can help your uh, users and potential contributors to know more about the plugin and to see how to contribute, etc. Uh, at the same time, it's easy to contribute for others. I'll show it later, but basically you can uh, edit uh, this page uh, right inside the web interface. Uh, you can use Markdown or an ASCII doc and GitHub offers a lot of features. So yeah, you can just click an edit button, uh, get there, you can get preview in the web interface and everything would, you know, would work. Also, you can uh, change your policies and this is where documentation as code really comes in play because you can say that, okay, if you contribute, uh, for example, a pull request, you are expected to write documentation uh, as a part of the pull request. So it's not like something, okay, some, somebody creates a feature and then you ask that, please update the wiki, it may happen or, or not. You as a plugin maintainer can set expectation that any feature has to be documented and it helps uh, Jenkins users. Uh, so that's uh, the main idea. And uh, you can edit it, you can review that, so everything lands at the same time. It also gives you versioning because uh, when you release your plugin, you get a tap in, a tap in GitHub. So you also get a version of documentation which you released and you can point people to version if they use different uh, tools. Again, it's not possible in Genesis week per se. Yeah, there is a history, but it's hard to find what exactly the documentation for your version and uh, people can just edit it uh, on the fly. Uh, last but not least, it's also about contributor recognition. Uh, there is a story which I will be presenting about change logs, but basically contributors to documentation just become general contributors of your repository. So you can mention them in the change logs, you can mention documentation in change logs, you can highlight these contributions, and finally motivate people to contribute more to your repositories. So that's the main idea for that. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the Jenkins uh, IO website. So Jenkins IO website is uh, one of um, our projects. Uh, basically, uh, this is our landing. So it's hard to assume that uh, nobody's seen this on the call, but yeah, just in case, uh, there is Jenkins IO, uh, which is the community, which our portal, which is our portal. And uh, the entire portal, including all the documentation, including all the listings, uh, sub-projects, etc., it's the documentation as cool. So you can uh, fully reproduce uh, this site in your development environment. You can hack it. And uh, yeah, basically, I can show you development version, which is just running on my machine, just in case. So yeah, it's a local machine. I can edit it quickly and uh, check changes. So if you go to the repository, you can uh, find uh, this site here. Uh, so. There is uh, all, there are also contributing guidelines, but basically what you can do, you can uh, just edit everything uh, from the web interface, as I said. So for example, let's say we want to contribute something. Uh, yeah, so here I can just uh, click edit button. Um, I can, let's say, uh, put hello world here or something like that. Uh, and then I can preview changes and you can see that there is hello world edit. So uh, all these pages on Jenkins.io, you can edit in uh, this way, um, and you don't need to um, put anything uh, additional. And after you do that, you can just commit your change or submit a pull request. I won't be doing so because I will poll pollute the repository because I have uh, I will, would be submitting it to the main one. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the idea. So you can quickly create uh, the patches. And moreover, if we talk about any documentation, for example, uh, about uh, pipeline plugins or something like that, pipeline documentation is hosted on Jenkins.io at the moment, you can just uh, go. And as a user, if you do not know where the page is located, it's also not a problem. Because here, here well, it's a development thing, so it takes a while. But here, if you just do not like this page, you can click improve this page button. And voila, it just opens uh, in web interface. And as I presented, you can just edit uh, this page, propose changes, and submit it. So that's how it uh, works in uh, this environment. And uh, Jenkins IO is fully contributable. If you want uh, to suggest any changes, you can do it uh, from the repository. And we have a decent documentation for different cases. So there is contributing as key doc in the landing. 
you can see that uh, there is a lot of uh, topics like including uh, guides for common cases if you want to change user documentation if you want to write a blog post you can just follow these guidelines um, and yeah this is the first way to do documentation as Jen in Jenkins the most of things are uh, being stored there as I said okay I guess I passed through this page and yeah what I wanted to say that this website is all was also introduced as a part of Jenkins 2.0 so a lot of documentation has been already moved, but not uh, all of this documentation. And we will have some example uh, later today about uh, uh, how to move. Okay, let's talk about plugins. I've already shown you how a plugins portal uh, uh, looks like. So basically it's additional portal, which is available from the Jenkins uh, web uh, interface and from the Jenkins website. So it's basically a plugins where you can navigate uh, the plugin documentation. And this is a second uh, major part of uh, plugin documentation uh, we offer because uh, this website is referenced from Jenkins updates centers. So plugin users uh, who do the updates, so they usually land there to discover the changes. Um, uh, this website takes uh, data from Jenkins Wiki and from our update sites. So you can see that for plugin pages, let's just take a random one. Uh, I'm not sure what is this plugin basically just released with no documentation so i guess let's try something else okay so uh, this is another plugin and uh, this plugin already uses github as a source but you can see that there is some installation statistics information for dependencies links to javadoc to github and also a lot of documentation which is being sourced so this is a common experience uh, for plugin users and uh, uh, this is uh, what uh, we were editing um, and uh, one of the issues for us was how to migrate uh, to the documentation. In uh, September 2019, we've got support of GitHub as the plugin source. So this is uh, what's, uh, what we're presenting. And uh, let's see how to migrate. Um, this story actually is not new for Jenkins because we knew that uh, documentation as code is good uh, uh, long ago and in 2016 we already had a JSOC project for migrating uh, the, the documentation. Uh, this project uh, didn't succeed due to some reasons but we didn't forget about this idea. There were some discussions, there were some prototypes, uh, there are people who started moving documentation manually uh, but uh, we really started getting traction in 2019. So one of Jenkins contributors, uh, Zbigniew, uh, he uh, proposed a pull request which had that uh, GitHub documentation support. So basically he took over the list of uh, ideas we had for JSOC and started implementing them. Uh, I'm not sure whether Zbigniew is on the call today, but yeah, just a huge shout out to him. Thanks a lot. Uh, it helped uh, us to move uh, the story forward. Uh, and uh, yeah, after some delays, we finally started uh, working on the plugin site updates in the background. So if you think that we just implemented everything in four days after Wiki was put to read on the state, it's not. Actually, the story was uh, already in our uh, list. Um, we started with this uh, sub project in uh, Jenkins Documentation Special Interest Group. Um, and yeah, in uh, September, we merged the pull request, which added support for. Um, uh, GitHub documentation sources uh, in our plugin site, and after that, uh, this uh, support was improved. Uh, so by the time uh, in October when the week went down, we were confident that uh, actually we can use this flow. Uh, we already had some uh, uh, draft guidelines for documentation migration, so we were able um, to build uh, the solution on the top of that. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on. So what's going on now uh, with uh, the plugin migration? Uh, one uh, story is uh, support of GitHub information as a source of uh, documentation. So yeah, now we support readme pages and we publish readme pages right inside GitHub. Uh, but there is also other things we want to support like change logs, plugin labels, maintainer information. So there is an epic uh, in Jenkins uh, Jira about that. This epic is here and we keep iterating on that. You can see that there is a lot of green ticks, but uh, yeah. There is still some uh, stuff to do there. Uh, then uh, there is another epic which we started for migration of plugin and Jenkins IO documentation. So I guess it's uh, the single epic. Uh, there are not so many tasks there because we basically need to create tasks. So yeah, there is an issue template for anyone who 
on to create a task for plugin migration. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is a coordinated effective result documentation special interest group to uh, keep this migration and we still have a, a lot of things so, to do for that. Oleg, yep. like there's no requirement that I have to create a ticket in there. I can, I can certainly migrate a plugin to use the new, the new system mm -hmm. without ticket, right? I just, just do the migration. Yep. Yeah, there is no uh, requirement. Uh, so it's just uh, for whatever what matters, uh, because somebody may want to create a ticket for backlog, or somebody just wants to create a new friendly tickets, for example, for Hacktoberfest, like we did before. And actually, a lot of uh, plugin uh, pages were migrated during Hacktoberfest. Uh, so yeah, you can use it, but you will ultimately not require to create tickets. Okay. And finally, there is this blog post which fully describes how to migrate the things uh, and how to enable uh, the stuff. So it's what uh, Mark and Gavin will be presenting in just in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So please uh, play with me. Yes, question yeah. there. So, so labels, it's not working yet. Plugin label. Uh, so yeah, when I speak about uh, labels, uh, there is, for example, if we go, let's see, I have configuration as code uh, plugin open. So here, if you go to the root, you can see that uh, there are labels, that configuration is called Jenkins Hacktoberfest, the Jenkins configuration or something like that. Uh, these labels could be made useful for Jenkins because, uh, uh, for example, if we go to the Mailer plugin or to whatever, you can see that there are some labels. And here you can see that plugin has no labels because, again, we deprecated support of Wiki. And we didn't put labels um, uh, right inside uh, the metadata. We have a repository uh, update uh, center too. So it's basically Jenkins documentation for update center. Yeah, it's the update center that I'm mostly worried about, that yeah. my SCM tag will disappear when I migrate. Yeah, right. So here we have some, uh, so, so it's, it's from file, sorry. Yeah, label definition set this. Yeah, here we go. So currently labels are being sourced only from this file. Daniel Beck uh, has uh, performed this migration maybe a couple of years ago. So all information is being sourced uh, from uh, this uh, uh, page, but if there is no metadata, for example, like for Mailer plugin, basically now Mailer plugin has no categorization in the Jenkins update centers, in Jenkins installation wizard, et cetera, et cetera. And mm -hmm. it would be great to have support of uh, GitHub tags instead of labels. So now, if anybody wants to fix that, you just go to this file and propose a pull request. Okay. So, so just for clarity, then, Bobby, that means that transitioning your plugin documentation from Wiki to GitHub won't sacrifice the labels. Did I understand correctly, Oleg? If they're already in this file that you're showing on screen, they will continue there until yeah, some I... time when we transition the label support. Yeah, right. So for example, get a trigger plugin, one of the plugins maintained by Bobby, I believe, it has a trigger label here. So it will be displayed uh, properly. Okay. Uh, but I guess that the wiki integration is already dead. I, so what we see for Mailer plugin, so we can double it, uh, check it, Mailer uh, plugin uh, wiki. Yep, uh, our uh, uh, plugin site still has terrible uh, uh, CEO, so we, it's not uh, really easy to find it in uh, Google, but you can find the wiki easily. And here yeah, you can see that uh, there is old wiki page. And this old wiki page, I believe it includes labels somewhere. Uh, uh, at the bottom, I think. Yeah, I'm just not, I'm not seeing it in the bottom either. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no labels. Yeah. So oh. that's why we don't have labels. So probably wiki labels are still supported, maybe not. Anyway, I wouldn't uh, bet on uh, wiki label support uh, to remain for a long time. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, my suggestion, if anyone wants to fix labels, just uh, submit a pull request here. And uh, later we will see how we can use GitHub topics for that because it could be more convenient uh, for plugin maintainers. So, yeah, sorry for such long uh, question, uh, answer, but it's one of uh, things we still have in our backlog. Thanks. Okay. Mm, yeah. So, uh, current state. Uh, so, we, again, uh, wiki is in the real only state, uh, plugin documentation 
uh, from GitHub is fully supported. So we, you can have README as Markdown, as a key doc, they will be displayed. Uh, you can also specify custom locations so that uh, you as plugin maintainer can say that uh, my wiki is stored, uh, my landing page is stored not on the README MD, but somewhere in the documentation. Actually, it was a pull request by Bobby, uh, and uh, we, we have implemented it. And by now, we have more than 100 plugins which already moved uh, um, uh, to GitHub. Mm, so, yeah, it's a nice progress there. Uh, there are some examples which I have already shown, and if you want to see more examples, one of the uh, useful source of information is this site, which we will present uh, soon, and you can see that uh, there are some statuses, so all the green plugins, if you go to a uh, plugin site, for example, Git client, you can see that uh, there is documentation which is retrieved from GitHub now, with all screenshots, uh, with all pages, with all the relative links, so if you have uh, links to nested documentation, they will be still displayed. So with uh, the current state, you can migrate, and uh, the blog post describes how to migrate. Um, and I guess uh, we will have presentation by Mark and Gavin, so they will describe how to do that. I already spent a lot of time, so I'll just say thanks uh, to all contributors. I cannot uh, list everyone uh, on this slide because yeah, we had dozens of contributors who helped with plugin migration. Uh, and with documentation migration, but yeah, thanks a lot to, to Zbigniew who initiated this effort and pushed it forward. Thanks a lot uh, to Gavin for the migration tool and for all code reviews. Olivia had helped us a lot with uh, deploying infrastructure because it also implied deploying services like plugin site or geek exporter, and Olivia helped us run block that. Mark uh, also contributed key and day a lot and uh, helped to coordinate it within the documentation seek and the team uh, helped with uh, the recent migrations and with progress stats. So yeah, there is a lot of contributors, and again, there is hundreds of uh, contributors who just helped uh, to move the plugin documentation. So thanks a lot to that. It helped us to overcome the uh, major infrastructure outage, and probably we will be able to uh, provide a great documentation for the users of Jenkins. Thanks, okay. so like. Thank you. So if there is no questions, we will just press it with real demos. Yeah, and I think Gavin, we've got you first on the list. Do, do you, would you like to take take screen sharing? Let's see. Oleg, I think that means you need to surrender the share. Okay, I'm happy to do so. Oh, where's my notes? Notes, notes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh yeah, okay, so I'm first. Screen share. Yeah, there was a question from Bobby about putting plugins for adoption. Uh, but yeah, I think we can uh, discuss it uh, after the presentation because yeah, it's a bit uh, uh, also a side question. Is yeah. That Bobby? So I'm just going to quickly cover the, the tool. So this, this tool started as a, I wonder if I can do it. And then it quickly became, oh my God, everyone's using it and I should make it work better. So we, uh, it's, it's uh, started off as just a simple, um, you enter in a, a plugin name you, and you hit convert and originally it just gave you markdown. Um, Oleg asked very quickly for ASCII doc. So then we started to have the same thing where you wanted to do this, you, you had a selector. Then that very quickly realized that for some plugins they have uh, images. So we can't really do this as a single box. So then we added the markdown zip and ASCII doc zip, which I have already downloaded, which will do the same thing, but it actually includes images as a zip, so you can actually do your fully export. And then it quickly ballooned past there, so now you can do the actual plugin ID, the actual Confluence page ID, you can take any um, Confluence page or any wiki page. Uh, I don't have any wiki pages open. Uh, but you can put anything in there, so you can just grab one at random, put it in here, and it'll, it'll go find everything it needs to do and e export it exactly the same way. So this very quickly became a uh, official tool. It just started off as, I wonder if I can do this, and three hours later it was done. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, uh, we also added a progress page, which so, I think- So Gavin, Gavin, for me, this was already miraculous. Just, I think you, you undersell how important it was what you did, because, I was dreading the, the act of converting wiki markup into ASCII doc because it's mind numbingly boring. 
and yeah. doesn't require any real thought. And you magically gave me something that produced output that was very usable. So that that's it was great. Thank you it's, for doing it's that. something I really like doing is I don't I know how much I love the command line and I know how much everyone else hates the command line. So I like making tools that just wrap the command line for me. Um, so one thing I will mention is while everything else in Jenkins or the majority of other things in Jenkins is a little Java, this is JavaScript. So that might deter a couple uh, contributions. But for the most part, I think we've actually hit pretty stable point. Um, I was going to show, I think I was supposed to show just a, a basic conversion. So um, the plan was, I lost my note, uh, my notes. But uh, essentially, you can do essentially any plugin in here. So it doesn't really matter. It should pull. It should pull the uh, the full markdown for you. Uh, the of course, the longer the the bigger the plugin documentation, the longer this takes. Uh, but it will run. Hopefully, maybe. Uh, well, if it doesn't, it's a big one. It. You, you picked a really big one, but it certainly has run because I used it for Git yes. client plugin. I used it for the Git plugin. And I know everyone is astonished. I used it for the platform labeler plugin as well. That yeah. vitally crucial, important plugin. So I prepared because I figured this will break because demos like that. So this is just the output that the, uh, the, the zip gives me. So I could, I could do it offline later, but essentially you take the, uh, anti-spammy markup formatter and it just pulled all the documentation from Jenkins or from the wiki and Maybe possible to make the screen a bit bigger oh, on, I can do that. Page, uh, on this page because yeah for me it's fine but uh, for those who are on small screens it may be Actually, I have no idea how to do that so uh, I don't know how to do it. it's not important uh, okay I can, I can do the other one though okay No, did I spell it wrong? Anti. Mark up, not mark down. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I can do that one though. Yeah. There we go. Now for those those like me who have have in inadequate eyesight, thank you, thank yeah. you. Yeah. So again, uh, this is not the best formatted, but it does function pretty well. You can enter in your any plugin, like I said, uh, and then if you go. Same thing if you go to the actual, oops, that's actually a good one. Sure, now we can't find a wiki. Come on, just any page, any page. You can do it. Well, mm -hmm. what you're highlighting now is one of the realities of the wiki is it's just not as high performance as mm -hmm. the static generated sites are. It, it doesn't have really great response. Yeah, um, and Mark will be showing that a little bit later anyways, so I'm not too worried about it. Where did my thing go? Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it'll, it'll put the, the files in both Markdown and ASCII, and you can also do the zip file if you want it offline or you want zips or attachments, that kind of thing. And then mm -hmm. last week, uh, we added a, the migration doc, which again, I know we'll talk about later, a little bit later. But again, this is just showing all the plugins, um, all the ones that are either okay or to do are being pulled from update center. So uh, mailer specifically is okay. So it's been migrated to the plugin site. Uh, credentials has not been migrated yet. And then some of the ones that are PR, we've manually marked them as PRs to know they're in progress. This is not an automatic process. This is something we're still talking about how to do automatic. But for now, any of the PR ones are all manually marked. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it for me on the actual app. Um, I think Mark was going to show actually how to do the full process. Thanks, Gavin. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, while we switch, um, I, would, I would like to say thanks to Pandoc uh, team. So Pandoc is an open source uh, tool which is designed for conversion of documentation. So yeah, Gavin did a great job to create uh, a service and SaaS for conversion. But yeah, under the hood, we use another open source project, uh, which helped us uh, a lot to get this thing done quickly. So yeah, yeah it, that's it was so easy with that tool. You just say, I have HTML, I want Markdown, and it's like, cool, done. 
Yeah, well, we had to put flux in order to filter out some uh, wiki, uh, wiki styles, etc. Because yeah. uh, uh, wiki generates a terrible HTML. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we did some investment in the flux, but yeah, uh, basically it's Pandoc and the hood. Yeah, yeah I noticed that the ASCII doc, the generated ASCII doc, had some artifacts left, but they weren't disturbing much. Yeah. So right. that's and what we have in our immigration guidelines. Uh, you will have to clean up some artifacts, and maybe Mark will show it quickly. Maybe. Right. It, it it is it is an imperfect it's an imperfect translation for sure, Bobby. But thankfully, it's the beginning of a translation and a, a dramatic improvement over the oh copy and paste text trying to do that that slogging mind numbing work without the help of a translator. <laughs> Oh yeah, it wasn't much I needed to do to clean that up. It almost worked out of the box, so it's awesome. Great. Yeah, and if so you do the zip, you actually it'll do the images as well. Right. Yeah. Th this this process, at least for me, has been an opportunity also to not just transform, but also look at oh, are there improvements I can make while I'm here? And it's put the documentation maintenance right in my developer workflow. So this is how you do a, trans, a transition for a plugin. I'm going to submit a pull request to the credentials plugin. Um, so first check, check was on the migrator, on the wiki exporter, find one that says to do. And you see the status up here that says, only, we've got less than 10% of the plugins converted. So there are plenty of opportunity for things to do. And some very high visibility plugins that actually already have documentation inside their GitHub repository. Credentials is one like that. So is SCM API, others as well. So the migration process can be actually quite simple. So the migration process starts with identify, does this page use wiki-based documentation? In this case, it does. And the, the giveaway here is this plugin information block here, which, you're, I'm on the plugin site, but it's telling me to see the plugin site. That's your hint. This is coming from the wiki. So then let's go to the how does the plugin site look? Oh, okay. Is there useful information here? Well, with this particular plugin, this whole table is actually not terribly useful anymore because we've long ago gotten past version 2.1.16 on the credentials plugin. We've a much bigger version number. Guess what? The wiki is out of date, but the source code is not out of date. So here's the source code for the credentials plugin. And if we look in its docs directory, it's got a user guide, a consumer guide, and an implementation guide. So what I think the plugin user should get is a link to the user guide. So they need a link to this. So all I need to do is capture the URL of that page. And now I'm going to go back to credentials plugins root level, open up the palm. And uh, Mark, I think, the, I think the user here is a API user, not a Jenkins user. Actually, Jesse, that's a good, that's a very good point. But I think specifically in this case, it really is a user. Let's, let's double check because that's one that I think there is an API consumer guide as well. So what I see is the user a doc, which talks about, yeah, okay. Maybe you're right. Maybe that is, yeah, well, no, see, but when I read through this document, it talks about things that I think are are vital to a user and has pictures for the user. So my assumption was this is a better choice, but you got a good point, Jesse, that I may need to think carefully about what I'm, what I'm showing to people. But I think this thing really is user-centered. It talks about system scope and global scope and user scope. Now others, certainly I think there are other plugins where it's really API documentation and that's probably not the thing we wanna show on the plugin site. So Jesse, would, do you think that this is looking at what we see here? Is this a reasonable thing to present on the plugin site? I, I guess so, yeah. Or you Looks can like just uh, present this page which points to user guide or whatever. I mean, a link with these uh, pointers. That, that's true. I could just do the edit, direct, edit and put a, 
put another page which jumps into that and that was the that was the page here right which said i could jump to this one and then the then the then the the reader of the plugin page could choose which one they want to do from there yeah. so either would be either would be fine let's go with for now let's go with short documentation and we'll have that discussion so we're going to take this one and let's go all the way up to the top level. I just open up the Palm XML file and I could do this in a fork on a local disk drive or I can do it here. And I change notice that there is this line right here, which is the URL line in at the main level at the first level inside the Palm file. And I'm going to edit this file. So click the edit icon. Now, if I had not already forked this repository, it would have forked for me. So it's already copied into my fork, and I can now go, go ahead here and see, find that URL again. It was, it was in the top. There, it's right there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take that out. It's not going to point to the wiki anymore. It's going to point to master docs readme.a doc submit my pull request so switch from wiki docs to github docs for plugins.jenkins.io oh bless it how about let's use shorter words use mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. Now, as a word of note here, this, I'm gonna propose the file change. I'm gonna submit the pull request. This change will not be visible until the maintainer accepts the pull request, merges the pull request, and does a release. And that's, that's just the nature of it. We have to go all the way through the release process before it will be visible on plugins.jenkins.io. So let's yeah. create that pull request. So this information has been pulled from Jenkins Update Center. So we generate special uh, metadata file uh, which has been consumed by plugin site in order to uh, present other things. So yeah, that's why it takes so long. So pull request ready. And now, of course, this will run through the whole CI process on ci.jenkins.io. Oh, shame on me. I should have given a better name than patch one. Forgive me. Mm -hmm. But the, it, is that, it is that simple. Now, there are, there are many different ways that plugins may do, do documentation. In some cases, they may document the docs on the wiki may be better than the docs that are in the repository. Then your pull request should include a doc file you may choose to use the existing readme. You might choose many different ways. The same fundamental technique applies. Use the best docs you've got, put them inside the repository, either in readme or another location, update the POM file, submit the pull request, release the plugin. Any questions so far? Oh, oh, I like that, Jesse. That was awesome. I, I thank you very much. No <laughs> problem. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So maybe not a question, but just a comment. Um, there are two ways to specify um, the location of documentation. So one way is to just put a link to your GitHub repository to the root. In such case, a plugin site will use GitHub API to locate uh, uh, the readme page. So GitHub itself is able to locate readme from uh, different locations uh, and to display that. It's one of the ways. Um, and then we will use GitHub uh, REST API in order to render this page in HTML. And another way is to put a link uh, to README in Markdown or Skidoc, like Mark presented. So both, both of these ways are fine. And the majority of plugins now just puts uh, documentation in the root of the repository because it's also the page which has been presented uh, to visitors uh, on GitHub. Yeah, it's a choice for any plugin maintainer. So if you want to set up it differently, just do it. Uh, by the way, if you just link to 
tree slash master slash docs without specifying the readme.a doc there, will that still get parsed properly? I guess not. And that one, that one I don't know, Jesse. It's a good question. So the idea there was for the credentials, the credentials plugin, could it have linked straight into the docs directory, right? And then let it decode right, which file? The, yeah, without the file name. Suffix. Right. And, and I don't know. So it's a good question. Yeah, right. So now uh, we support uh, either uh, link to the repository or link to the file specifically. You cannot link to a folder right now. Okay. Because the folders do not have a uh, presentation API. Well, unless I'm messing up something, this is uh, the current behavior. Great. So and oh, another. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, the documentation on plugin site will be displayed only for plugins using Jenkins CI organization. So if you host plugin in another organization, we will not support uh, GitHub as a source, at least in the current implementation. Because if anything goes wrong, we have no access, admin access uh, to change the layout and whatever. So when we were discussing options, we decided not to enable it uh, for other organizations. So yeah, the most of the plugins are hosted within Jink CI, and this is our preferred way of hosting nowadays. Thank you. Now, Oleg, we had definitely wanted to cover Release Drafter. We've got about seven or eight minutes left, and I would prefer we go into Release Drafter because already just showing this piece, I was reminded, oh, where's the change log for these things? And I really love Release Drafter. Did you want to get into Release Drafter for this session, or do we want to do that at another time? Yeah, we could, but I thought it's for 90 minutes or for one oh, hour. Do we, oh, we got time. Oh, my mistake. Okay, even better. Yeah, That's I'm just great. checking because I was sure that I scheduled it for 90 minutes. Oh, then let's let's go ahead. That uh, I feel much better. That's good. Yeah, my calendar actually says one hour. So, uh, question to audience: uh, Do we want to continue in a relaxed way, um, or do we want to wrap up top in five minutes? I'm good to continue. Me too. I need to wrap up, but you guys go ahead. I've I've I know about release tracker. So. <laughs> So then uh, let's probably finish it. Yeah, yeah, my apologies. I just uh, scheduled it scheduled it to one hour in uh, the meetup invitation. Meetup invitation says twenty after for me, so we get an hour twenty. Right. So so I think I think I propose we go ahead at the casual pace. Okay. If people have to drop off, I would yep. much rather capture release drafter into this video that we okay. can then refer people and have them watch the video later if they need to. If, if their schedules won't allow them to stay, that's okay. Gavin and I can stay here, and even if it's just the three of us doing a recording, that's still very valuable in my mind, Oleg. Okay, so yeah, then let's go ahead with our plan. Uh, okay. I guess we still wanted to talk a bit about Jenkins IO, right? Right, so let's see. So there were, we had talked about this transition. Gavin, was there another step that we wanted to sh show? I love the, the migration process. We've seen how, how easy it is to do that migration. Then we can migrate documentation actually from the wiki itself. And I think you showed that in one example. I have found others. Were there other things you wanted to show, Gavin? So I didn't get a chance to actually show a uh, wiki link because I couldn't find one quickly enough. Um, but also if you want to update the actual this page you can click on the icon on the top right the little github oh oh right so we can quickly do this it's a little bit i haven't done this in a while but uh if you scroll down there should be a prs dot yeah if somebody uh, pulls wants, .js, can, uh, you went too far somebody it, wants i can uh, show the migration quickly if you hit that t would... quickly we'll just do it quickly here before i forget Hit T to go file finder, and then pulls.js. Pulls you can just type it. Yeah, that one. So if you're in here, you can list. This is the uh, the repository name and the pull ID. So if you want yours oh. to show up as pending, then you can add it to this list. Otherwise, okay, you can so, just wait. So this is where I put the the fact that I have submitted the version column pull request. Thank yeah. you. All right, good. I had missed that. Okay, so if I want I want to record for other people, okay, I've submitted the credentials pull request. I've submitted the one for version column. 
All I do is go here, submit a PR to this repository, and that'll properly show it in the table so that others know not to bother with that, that plugin. Yes. Thank you. Although this is a completely optional step, but yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Oleg, you said you wanted to show, you, you would be comfortable showing a conversion? Yep, uh, why not? So uh, if you want, I can just uh, uh, show a live demo. Great, thank you. Uh, well, uh, this demo isn't really prepared, but we can do that. Okay, this is my screen? Yes. Okay, so we have uh, some pages. Um, I just, uh, so you can see that uh, there is a plugin developer documentation. And although we started migrating this documentation three years ago, using to do zero, uh, basically this process uh, got stalled and some documentation hasn't been migrated. And for example, here I just opened a page and there is um, uh, writing an SCM plugin. So if you go there, uh, you can see that uh, it indicates that the development is in progress. So basically there are some references, uh, whatever, but uh, the section itself uh, is missing. So we don't have anything to display here. So what we could do um, uh, just for the demo, I found uh, the wiki which says uh, SCM plugin architecture or something like that. And actually it come, uh, the, yeah, so there is a name right into my SCM plugin. So uh, there is some things. Uh, I want to judge whether the content is up to date or not. I'll just show the migration. Uh, so I take this page. Right uh, now there is no um, images here. So I will use the quick export thing, uh, Jenkins IO, uh, Jenkins Wiki exporter. So the tool which Gavin presented. And here I will use ASCII doc because um, Jenkins website uh, works in ASCII doc mode. And here you just click convert. Mm, so after some time, uh, we should get a ASCII doc, uh, which we could just put on uh, the Jenkins wiki. Uh, sorry, on Jenkins IO. This is how it works uh, for Jenkins IO, but basically you can do the same for plugins. You can just open them uh, in your favorite IDE, uh, edit uh, the documentation and just submit a pull request. And uh, if you export docs, they export it in the format like we use for other plugins. So basically you can just uh, paste them into the right folder and get documentation. Okay, so this is our documentation exported. You can see that we got a remarkably clean uh, ASCII doc file. So no markers, no whatever. I guess I was just lucky. Uh, so here I have this page opened uh, in uh, um, Visual Studio Code. So basically this is the page with metadata we show. This is a work in progress true flag. So what I'll do, is I'll assume that we fixed that. I will remove this flag and I will put the content. So one of the things you can see that uh, um, based, so one problems we have uh, is uh, Pandoc that uh, it breaks the lines at 80 symbols, I guess, or at some symbols, we can uh, adjust that. But usually our recommendation is uh, to align by dots. So let's see what we've got. Uh, I need to save the page at least. Okay, I saved it. And here, if I just uh, reload this page from Jenkins IO, yeah, now we have content. Uh, this uh, uh, markup is still here because we need uh, to restart uh, the development. Metadata is not written on the flight by Jenkins IO, but uh, yeah, you just got uh, the content uh, in a markdown. And I would argue that even uh, from very beginning, it looks better in uh, Jenkins IO uh, than uh, in Wiki. Well, maybe except uh, these flags, but yeah, that's what we've got. Um, so now, uh, yeah, before the submission, I, I won't be submitting pull requests, uh, but yeah. Uh, so here you can okay. see that. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Can you set this? Can you set this to use one line per sentence for ASCII doc instead of? Uh, no, Pandoc phone. doesn't support it right now. There are other options, mm -hmm. but not one line per sentence. I submitted feature request, uh, but uh, it's not implemented yet. So here you can see that uh, we actually got some glitches. For example, there is a link to Team Foundation Server plugin. But uh, due to whatever reason, and, uh, right now these links uh, got lost. I'm not sure why. Uh, so it's probably a glitch in uh, uh, recent versions of Exporter Tool when we started cleaning up some uh, references. So basically, we cleaned up uh, too many of them. So these links will need to be restored. I will just show it to you. Mm, so yeah, 
I'm uh, switching to line one line uh, by sentence like uh, thank you thank uh, you yeah then uh, here you can uh, see some recursion because here we reference uh, the uh, plugin wiki uh, but again it's not something we want uh, to do instead of that here we would reference uh, the uh, plugin and here we actually would use Jenkins wiki we can just say plugin TFS basically to get the same result as uh, we had before because uh, Jenkins wiki is able to resolve this macro uh, for uh, plugins if you hit this key so then you would just need to have uh, uh, to put the pool name so it's HTTPS uh, plugins uh, 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 Jenkins uh, IO TFS uh, TFS plugin or something like that and uh, you so we, have a, we have a macro for this too somewhere uh, right. for, uh, for Jenkins IO yes for plugin wiki pages macros don't work so for plugin pages you have to write uh, a full ASCII doc on full markdown without macros okay but whatever here, we, here you've got uh, this page. I've added additional uh, link, and uh, yeah, basically you can continue. You can clean up this page. Um, uh, you can uh, clean up, for example, uh, these references. You can uh, clean up sentences. Some other bits might be missing, and if you want to see such mutation, so basically there are two guidance guidelines for you. One uh, guideline is for Jenkins IO. So if you go to Jenkins IO. Uh, GitHub. Uh, yeah, it works. So here on the contributing uh, page, you can see um, a specific guide which was created for moving documentation from Jenkins Wiki. So just step by step guide how to do that um, and how to export, how to uh, submit pull requests. So if you uh, work on um, uh, Jenkins IO pages, you follow this guide. Uh, for plugin uh, documentation, the process is a bit different, but uh, good news is that we have another guide. Uh, just a second. Actually, it would be great to link the blog post from this page as well. Mm. But yeah, so I'm just going to link to your blog, and here we have uh, uh, yeah, too many blog posts recently. Yeah, plugin documentation, moving to docs. So you can just refer to this blog post for guidelines. So uh, there are some guidelines how to uh, do immigration and uh, how to update metadata, what Mark uh, has presented, and uh, other things like pages, etc. We won't be uh, touching that, but yeah, there is uh, some stuff for that. And here's a link for full guide for migrating uh, plugin documentation in an automatic way with Jenkins Wiki exporter. Only if you do not like that, yeah, there is still manual way documented on this page. So you can refer to these guidelines for detailed information, what to do and what to review, because yeah, we noted some potential pitfalls right inside our migration guideline. Okay, so that's it with plugin migration. Any questions? Or should we move uh, to ASCII doc? Or oh, sorry, uh, for release drafter? Release drafter. Okay. I, I, think, I think we're ready to move onward. Thanks very much, Oleg. Yeah, thank you too. It was an unplanned demo, but okay, at least we got some migration. The next time we will be submitting pull requests as well. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about change logs. Change logs uh, actually is another initiative uh, which uh, we started uh, in uh, June 2019, so less uh, than half a year ago. Um, um, and yeah, our main problem was with change logs because there are many places where you can find change logs in Jenkins. One obvious place is Jenkins IO where we post change logs for Jenkins Weekly uh, and LCS releases. Then uh, yeah, we have Jenkins Wiki. So many plugins post uh, their change logs um, inside wiki pages um, in different formats and it fits all these issues so that uh, it's not machine readable, uh, sometimes it's complicated. To understand what's exactly there, you cannot uh, find it. Um, and actually, there are many other ways uh, to um, uh, find uh, to pull, to use change logs. And Jenkins plugin maintainers use uh, all of these ways. So yeah, you can put change logs in your repository. You can use GitHub releases. You can use external site. Uh, some uh, plugin vendors do that, and some uh, plugin maintainers just don't write change logs on, on at all. 
So yeah, there are many ways. And uh, that's unfortunate for Jenkins users uh, because uh, first they do not know where to find them and it's quite uh, difficult. Uh, so we had multiple options. We could have said that all change logs uh, should be on the plugin site or whatever. Uh, but instead of that, we decided uh, to focus more on uh, documentation as code for changelog as well. And right now, we want to target two options. Uh, one is changelog MD in the repositories, and another one is GitHub releases. So depending on your preferences, you can use one of these ways, and we still keep the Jenkins IO uh, for plugin documentation. So that's what uh, the current documentation from Jenkins Documentation Special Interest Group. And one of uh, the things, yeah, Nobody uh, really likes to write and change logs, uh, plugin maintainers uh, also. Sometimes we do not get uh, releases of uh, plugins for months just because people uh, do not want to spend time on the change logs right now. And uh, basically it impacts velocity of uh, Jenkins as a project because uh, we do not get enough uh, um, insights of, uh, well, we uh, create obstacles for maintainers. Uh, as users, um, you have to go to commit history to understand what's staged, uh, what, uh, why it uh, takes so long, etc. And uh, it would be great if change logs were automated so that uh, uh, maintainers uh, do not spend time on that. They spend time on delivering uh, stuff for users. And then a change logs could be also um, um, presented in a, uh, a way which is helpful for users. So you may have seen these change logs uh, before because many plugins have already moved. So this is basically what I present. Um, it's change logs uh, which are being generated by release drafter as a part of GitHub actions. So release drafter is a tool um, which allows to generate a change log and to submit a release draft to GitHub releases with markdown uh, describing this change log. And then maintainers can decide on what they do with that next because they can put this change log, for example, um, to uh, change log MD, or they can just release this change log as markdown release. Um, and uh, this uh, tool is actually available as a GitHub application. So you can connect it uh, to your repository uh, um, quickly. Uh, and um, as a part of our project, uh, there were, were a lot of contributors who actually contributed to release drafter. I guess Gavin uh, did some uh, patches, also Tim and Joseph Patterson, they also contributed for JCast plugin. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is what we started using uh, for Jenkins project as a prototype and it works quite well. So you can find it here. Basically, it's not restricted to Jenkins. You can use it in other projects as well. But yeah, for Jenkins, we started to adopt it on the organizational scale uh, because we decided that it would be cool if we unified across our uh, all of the repositories. So how it works? Basically, it uh, reads uh, your pull requests and creates a change log based on pull requests. So there are other tools which operate on the commit level. For Jenkins, we discovered that it's quite complicated because there is a lot of commits being created and uh, pull requests provide uh, more insights. Uh, so release drafter takes uh, pull request titles, it puts uh, labels and uh, generates uh, a change log on, uh, based on this information. And uh, actually it's pretty flexible, so you can configure it. Uh, there is configuration as code, basically change logs are just markdown format. That's what allows to move uh, that to change log MD if you need. Uh, you can configure it uh, right inside your repository. Uh, but in Jenkins project, instead of that, we actually uh, configured a global configuration because uh, release drafter as a GitHub application, it's based on ProBot. It's a framework for GitHub applications. And one of uh, recent ProBot features, uh, well, it was a, a ProBot plugin. Now it's a part of uh, ProBot itself, is configuration inheritance. So uh, basically, it allows to deep merge some configurations, and uh, it allowed us to create a uh, unified specification for change logs across the entire organization. So if you go to uh, GitHub uh, mm, uh, repository, so it's Jenkins uh, GitHub, so it's a storage for all kinds of metadata where we have code of conduct, support security policies, something like that. Uh, here you can find that uh, there is also metadata for release drafter. Not only metadata, we actually have documentation describing how to use it, how to configure that if you're a plugin maintainer, but also there is a configuration sample. This configuration sample defines everything, how we configure change logs. 
So here, for example, you can see default name templates. So in Jenkins, we mostly use digit version for plugin. So we enabled it by default. Uh, we have some categories, for example, new feature, bug fixes, uh, which again uh, are configured here on the global level. Uh, we have a template and we have replacers. So for example, if you want to reference a Jira ticket uh, in the pull request or CE, or if you want to use some common acronyms like custom or package or Jenkins Valorana here, just for example, uh, you can use replacers in order to configure this feature and then you generate your, this change log. So I'll so, probably open, yep. Oleg, is it okay if I ask a question at this yeah, point? Sure. So in using release drafter, I think I had to define in my repository, the labels, it didn't seem like the labels were inherited from the parent, that the label definitions were inherited. Should they have yep. been inherited? So label definitions is a problem in GitHub because in GitHub historically, there is no way to manage labels as configuration as code. I they see. just added uh, the support a few weeks ago, uh, but again, uh, it only offers default labels. It doesn't offer labels for uh, recent, uh, for historically created projects. So basically it had no particular value for us uh, to use it in that way, uh, but we could. Uh, there are other alternatives. For example, if you go to configuration as code plugin, here you can discover another promote applications uh, settings which basically uh, does some configuration. And here you can see that it configures uh, labels. And there is even my pull request, uh, my command uh, to move it uh, to the shared GitHub. So we could have done configuration as code label, for, uh, configuration as code for labels and other things in this way, but it's not implemented yet. And basically um, each maintainer has to uh, enable uh, labels and configure them on, the, uh, on his or her own right now. But the good news is that default labels created by GitHub are here. So for example, when you create new repository, there are labels like enhancement or bug, and you can see them there. So out of the box, you already get uh, some labels. And yeah, later we can improve uh, once uh, we uh, evolve uh, Jenkins ecosystem. Because yeah, we can uh, manage labels across the entire organization, but it requires some uh, scripting, for example, in GitHub actions. But technically, we can do it uh, now. Okay, so there's there's a potential in the future for automation. The the technique I had to use was actually okay mm -hmm. of creating my own labels in the repositories I have that are existing that aren't new repositories. Thanks. Exactly. So we can improve it later. So here I'm just showing you a change log in real life. So for this plugin, uh, the release was uh, relatively recently and there was no changes. So here you can uh, just see released versions. For um, the non-released uh, versions, let's take configuration as code plugin. Yeah, you can see that there is some one pull request nursed by team. So here, if you click, you can see that uh, there is a draft. So this is an uh, incoming uh, change log, which has been automatically generated, which is not uh, additionally handcrafted. So it's what uh, has been generated. Uh, they think that uh, this change log is only visible to maintainers. I created a refee for, to GitHub to have uh, a support of publicly visible uh, change log drafts, but it's not implemented. And I'm not sure whether it will be implemented, but I think that it would be great improvement. But right now it's only for admins. Users still have to go uh, to commit history to see what's in common. Okay. So yeah, these uh, change logs are generated automatically. And cool thing about that, that uh, configuration inside the repository is just like, uh, where it is, yeah, it's here. It's just like that. So it's just a few lines because everything comes from global. And this is the configuration you can see the, in the most of the projects which already adopted release drafter. So this global configuration basically helps maintainers to spend a lot of time. You just need to specify tag template because maybe in a release uh, plugin by default injects artifact ID before the version. So we cannot automate that. And uh, yeah, we could have automated that if this drafter supported it, but uh, this feature is not available right now. So there is no template for repository name. So we could use repository name, apply regex or whatever other magic. But right now, you just uh, have to say to what field, which is probably not a big deal. And you get uh, all these change logs uh, running for each release. Okay. Mm. So, yeah, 
I will just skip this page. So what do you need to do if you want to use a release drafter in your plugin? So firstly, you need to release a, enable release drafter. There are multiple ways. You can go to this release drafter page, which just describes everything step by step if you need it. Uh, but yeah, this is just a quick summary. So you can release, uh, enable it as a GitHub application. Basically, you just go to this site, and if you have admin permission in the repository, you can just say that I want to enable it. Uh, so what's going on? Uh, okay, so you just open this page, so you can see that there is a number of organizations. I go to Jenkins, and I need to enter my password. Uh, and here you can see that uh, there is configuration. So as uh, I'm Jenkins admin, so basically I can enable the release drafter everywhere, but you as a common user will likely be able to enable it only for your repositories where you are admin. And by default, we now get uh, current admin permissions to plugin engineers within their repos. So here you can see that uh, there is 127 repositories which adopted the release drafter. So it looks like a big number, but it's working 5% adoption across the plugin ecosystem. So we definitely have something to improve. I'm very happy to see that Chuck Norris plugin has released drafter. Yeah. <laughs> it's our so, most important plugin. Yeah, you can see that there is a lot of plugins that are also almost all developer tools which switched to release drafter because for development tools, we had even more difficulties with maintaining change logs. And now, yeah, it's just click a button and you get this change log. Uh, so yeah, uh, there is a lot of repositories. Hey, I was I was rigorous in maintaining the Git plugin change logs seriously, and the release drafter change logs are dramatically better. Dramatically better. They look better. They're more navigable. There are so many things that they improve because of that layout. The hyperlinks are more useful. And oh, yeah. also throw out if you go to the very top, Oleg, uh, and you do the watch drop down. Uh, of the, the Patreon now, there's a watch button. All oh, right. So one of the cool things about release drafter is you can now watch for releases only, and every time a release happens and a new tag happens, it'll actually send you a notification. Probably not a good idea for Oleg, who gets a thousand and two hundred uh, notifications a day, but for me, who gets a lot less, it's really nice to be able to watch releases on your favorite plugins, and then this mm -hmm. is hooked up to that, which was a lot nicer than. Your update center is suddenly getting a new update, and you're like, "What changed?" Yeah. Moreover, if you so if you are not subscribed to this repository, you have this uh, uh, banner. So everybody who is visiting your change logs will be automatically over offered to subscribe to uh, subscribe to updates. Okay. So let's quickly finish that. So yeah, if you don't have admin permissions, you can uh, ask us by just uh, creating entry ticket, and then we will likely just give you admin permissions because we are fixing it up uh, slowly across the organization. And uh, the third way is to actually use GitHub Actions uh, because yeah, in some cases we had to add support of GitHub Actions, for example, for Gradle plugin, because uh, there is a bug, uh, um, in uh, um, uh, the recent version, in the current version of uh, uh, release drafter uh, GitHub application. So instead of that, for example, in GitHub action, we use uh, uh, in Gradle plugin, we use GitHub actions to generate, and you can see that uh, there is a fork for Jenkins release drafter, uh, which basically uh, fixes a few bugs we hit. And here you can see that uh, the same change logs have been actually generated by GitHub actions. So now, is there a is there a benefit to using GitHub Actions? Is there something that that would that would benefit me? I, I'd never never consider yeah, using uh, GitHub Actions instead. Yeah. So there are two benefits. One benefit is that you get execution log because with GitHub application you don't get one. So here you can go to run actions and you can see that there is log and whatever because yeah, it executes and if something fails you can you, you can investigate the failure there. Another benefit is that basically it runs on GitHub Actions, so you can understand when the job runs or not. When you use GitHub application, you basically rely on the uh, release drafter service to execute everything correctly, and if there is outage or whatever, the change log may not be generated. So here it's more deterministic. Is there so, any chance we're going to add this to the default plugin Groovy file for CI Jenkins as well? Uh, we could. 
So basically, uh, we could ra release drafts right, right inside Jenkins pipeline. Uh, we don't do that because yeah, we had um, some issues with uh, Jenkins stability over past months, but uh, technically we could run it and then uh, it, we will have Jenkins bot submitting uh, release drafts. So we could do that. So now Jenkins bot submits us uh, uh, build statuses like these ones. Uh, and yeah, we can teach uh, it uh, to submit uh, uh, release drafts as well. So yeah, we can. We don't do it right now because yeah, it would also consume uh, GitHub uh, rate limit, uh, which is uh, yes. quite uh, yes. a limited resource yeah. on uh, CI Jenkins uh, IO. Uh, but yeah, uh, technically we could do that. Okay, so let's finish uh, the slide deck then. Yeah, uh, you can also add labels. After, so after enabling your repository, you will start getting drafts, but you still need uh, to categorize non-released changes to get a fancy change log. If you don't like labels, you can just disable them uh, by overriding the configuration, and then you will have no categories, but it's totally up to you. Um, and you can, uh, uh, then you will need to update the documentation to point uh, the change logs. So what we usually do in our plugins now, so if you go to, for example, the role strategy plugin, here you can see badges, so something like Gitter chart, and also badges, one with badges links you to change log, and then you just navigate here. So the added value of these badges, that these badges are accessible on the plugin site as well, so here they are. So even if you don't support change log listing here yet, you can see that these badges right away. Uh, so we recommend to update plugin documentation so that users uh, can find uh, these change logs and later we will be injecting uh, additional support for the plugin side. And after that, uh, you will have to release uh, the plugin uh, because yeah, you need to attach the change logs uh, to something. And then uh, you will need, um, so we had an example. Uh, yeah. Mark, would you mind if I use your Git plugin? Just for the demo? No, no, you're welcome to, yep. please. Yeah, so here we can see a draft of version 4.1.0. By the way, congrats with 4.0 release for Git plugin. Yeah, and here we have change log. So this change log is basically mm -hmm. uh, just a draft generated based on uh, pull request titles. So yeah, you, as a maintainer, you can improve them uh, before merging. But ultimately, you, can, uh, you may need to do some uh, fixes. Uh, so, for example, here, let's say we don't, so here quotes, we don't like them. We can uh, put something like that in Markdown. So just uh, copy anything with the change log, and then in preview it uh, appears as a term. Or you can add additional hyperlinks, you can put additional uh, data, and we also recommend to put summaries if you want to highlight something. So, for example, here you put hello world, uh, or something like that. After that, uh, we can also edit label. So by default, uh, uh, it will uh, inject labels, though there are some bugs. But here, for example, we can create label. We just shouldn't uh, publish this change log in such way. Uh, but yeah, you can do that. And you mm -hmm. should do that, because otherwise, uh, release won't be associated with a particular re release tag created by Maven. And then you can just publish this fine-tuned change log, and uh, then uh, all users who are subscribed to release notifications uh, will get it. So basically, even before they see that in the update center, so they get notifications with a change log summary, so they can see what exactly was released. Okay, and yeah, you just publish it. And after that, yeah, you get this change log basically generated and available to your users. Again, drafts are not publicly visible. I'm not sure, well, hopefully we will change it at least for release drafter, but yeah, that's the current state of affairs in GitHub. So some highlights, uh, almost all development tools, at least all development tools uh, which we touch, uh, they use the release drafter now for change logs. So plugin poms and other common tools you use uh, the plugin maintainer, they already switched uh, to release drafter. Uh, I'll yeah, have a few minutes left, so probably I'll just uh, show it. So yeah, this is a plugin form. And plugin form, uh, when you see it here, you can see that um, uh, there are change logs, uh, which are also generated using release drafter. 
So same as before. Um, and uh, these uh, tools, uh, these change logs are really essential because yeah, I'll just take a Dependa bot, I'm not sure. Because a Dependa bot is one of the tools. It actually, it's actually able to pull change logs. So here's a better example because uh, there is just commit history. Let's take a bill of materials. Maybe we have something there. Okay, a bump GDK tool from version 1.3 uh, to version 1.4. And here in the pull request, we have uh, change logs, which are surprised generated by release draft. So there is uh, some overlaps uh, between tooling, which basically help you as a maintainer to understand what changes without going uh, forward. So yeah, uh, there are advantages. And, um, and that code in Dependabot is really complicated because there's no standard for so release notes is cool, but then sometimes they have a change log option and it's pulled from like 14 different sources depending on what's there. So yeah, release notes are very supported for dependent part. It's really nice. Yeah. So maybe we will uh, do something like that for Jenkins plugin site. Maybe we'll just take a dependent core because it's open source. Well, who knows? Uh, but uh, yeah, it's yet to be seen. Um, so, yeah, now we have more than 100 plugins which already moved to release drafter. So far, so good. Uh, yeah, we did receive some pull requests to change the default templates to add additional labels, but generally it gets adopted well and you can contribute to these default resources. It's just pull request on GitHub. Um, and we have several pull requests, uh, several contributors from Jenkins projects uh, in the release drafter ecosystem. Yeah, thanks, Gavin. In my case, I just contributed the uh, issues and uh, some, some bug fixes recently. So, but yeah, it's still good. So yeah, uh, 127 repositories as on the morning, we and counting. Uh, and actually we have some uh, plans. So first the integration with plugin side. So showing these change logs on the plugin side. If my wish list is to also show it in Jenkins web UI. So if you go to plugin manager, you can also uh, see the change logs there. So that uh, I, as a user, you can easily access this data. Again, uh, it's not clear how to do it without uh, a GitHub API limit. So maybe we'll have to cache this information on plugin site somehow, yet to be seen. Um, and yeah, then it's also great, would be great to have aggregated change logs because for example, if you use Blowotion, if you use pipeline, I guess it's a challenge sometimes to understand uh, what exactly was fixed and uh, in which exactly component. So for Blowotion, it's a bit better now because it's a mono repo. But yeah, for pipeline, it's hard to find the things. So by aggregating these change logs, we would be able to easily understand uh, what exactly changes for uh, uh, plugin users when they do bulk updates. And yeah, there will be like a lot of uh, changes in uh, change log formats. In addition to that, we are also working um, in the Jenkins core change log automation. I'm just not mentioning it in there because yeah, it's a separate story. So if anybody is interested, yeah, there is uh, there are links and there is documentation right inside uh, uh, our GitHub repository, and you can contact us using uh, Seek channels and uh, like Gitter or mailing list. So if you have any questions, just let us know. So. Any questions before we start wrapping up? Okay, so yeah, this meeting went uh, over time a bit, but again, it's first time we do a developer meetup. Uh, so yeah, uh, things to improve. So yeah, uh, Jenkins needs you, and actually we need uh, contributions because yeah, there will be a, a lot of uh, changes and uh, during Hartoberfest we received hundreds of contributions and dozens of them go towards documentation, towards uh, date migration, but uh, there is still a lot of things to do. And we seek help from contributors. Uh, so yeah, you could help just by talking to us and the documentation seek because we seek uh, feedback about the documentation. Uh, you can help us with plugin migration. As Gavin showed today, we still have more than 1,000 plugins to migrate. So definitely uh, there is a place for contributions. Uh, then uh, we, we can migrate Jenkins IO documentation like I presented today. You can help with migration tools like uh, Jenkins Wiki Exporter. Again, uh, it's on GitHub, so if you want to improve it, for example, but uh, data conversion or whatever, just uh, uh, contribute a pull request. 
or if you want to use it in another project for what it was, because uh, there are other Confluence users who want to migrate. Um, then we have plugin side, uh, and for everything, we will also appreciate the reviews and copy editing. If you go to the documentation special interest group page, uh, you will be able to find links to pull requests which are waiting for reviews. Uh, if you're a plugin maintainer, yeah, we recommend to move uh, the documentation to, G to GitHub. Um, it doesn't mean uh, that uh, you go uh, become reliant on GitHub because it's one of the fears right now, because documentation is just in Git. So it's portable between uh, other sources. Um, and yeah, you still uh, fully control it. It's not like GitHub pages, it's not like GitHub wiki, you have full control inside your repository, you can follow documentation as code practices, and it's pretty good. Same for change logs, you can move either to GitHub releases or to change log MD, and uh, it's something you could do, and if you're already there, you can just add fun things, like for example, badges, repo topics, uh, links to channels, like to Gitter, so that your users can reach out to you, contributing documentation and whatever. As a member of Documentation Seek, we really encourage you to improve your documentation for both users and contributors, so that in the future we can uh, facilitate contributions uh, to the plugins. And if you have any interest uh, to meet us, uh, yeah, we will be at the DevOps World Jenkins World. Uh, there is Hackfest on December 2nd. And uh, at this Hackfest, we already have uh, some documentation related projects. So we can just sit together and hack something. There is Contributor Summit on December 3rd. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess they will be retrospective for Jenkins Wiki outage, where we will also talk uh, how we could do better next time and whatever. And I guess there will be other topics. And of course, community booth. So if you just go to the conference, you can meet me, Mark, and uh, Gavin, are you going to Jenkins World? Not this time, no. Yeah, maybe next time. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can uh, meet the Jenkins contributors there, ask any questions about documentation, about whatever, we will be there to help. And yeah, of course, there are discount codes for those uh, who contribute and who participate in meetups. So don't forget to use them. Um, contacts, yeah, we have uh, a documentation special interest group uh, page, and uh, basically you can go there and find out uh, more information about the special interest group, about the projects we are working on. Yeah, you can see that the plugin documentation hub is basically our project there. And you can also find the connection links. So there is mailing list, there is chat, and there is a link uh, to meetings. So you can follow these resources in order uh, to join our meetings. They are usually on Fridays, but a bit earlier than this meetup. Um, then yeah, you can join, and any contributions will be much appreciated. Okay, I guess that's it for from me. Are there any questions which we haven't covered yet? No, people have been answering all the things in Okay. Chat. So, like, any additional comments? Uh, anything else? Yeah, thank you, Oleg. Thanks very much, and thanks to the community for the contributions that we're receiving. That's wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thanks to all. Uh, so, yeah, we had a question from Bobby about uh, 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 plugin ownership. Uh, I, we could took, uh, take it off uh, line, or we can briefly discuss, discuss it now on the record. Uh, what's the I, I'm going to have to go, so I'm going to go. Okay. Thank you. So I guess we just closed down because, uh, yeah, there is a developer release to discussion about the topic, and right now the situation isn't that pleasant there. So, Great. Yeah, again, thanks, everyone. Mm, and, yeah. Thank you, everyone. I'll end the recording and end the